Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith and that is Jim. He's joined me at least for now. He may turn around and say hello. Who knows? He's on my ironing board just observing the day. <clears throat> so, how are you guys? Um, that quilt behind me, before I forget to tell you, is Empress Feathers. And you might notice that it's it's kind of a princess feather design, but I decided back in the day when I made it that I was I would rather be an empress than a princess. And so so I call it Empress Feathers. It is in the book Quilts with a Spin, which is out of print but available as a print on demand or ebook. You can find it on my website. So so, 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 what am I talking about today? Let me click this to go to the next scene. Um, and it reminds me, you can't see it, but I can see it. It reminds me that I am talking to you about today how I store my quilts, how I fold them when I have to fold them, and how I display them when I hang them on the wall. And because it would be really hard to, you know, do all that here just right in front of the little webcam. Um, I've got videos and I want to start the next video for you. And it shows you how, how you know, it starts with a quilt on the roll because I roll my quilts. You'll see. I've placed my rolled quilt on top of the bed and I already used the lint roller on the bed. If you have pets, this is a good idea because you don't want to get more pet hair on your quilt. I tie the rolls together with a variety of things. That is a strip of flannel. That is another strip of flannel. This is some cotton cording that I had. So something that will stay tied pretty easily is what I use. And I have a very low-tech tagging system. Uh, this has got empress feathers on the inside. It has had other things because my tag is pretty full. The outside could be muslin or you could use what I often do and that is bed sheets. You know, you get a bed sheet that's used up but not all the way used up. So a strip from a bed sheet that's about 18 inches wide will wrap around the outside of most quilts. And then you can see inside is my tube. This PVC pipe is almost exactly the length of the quilt and I usually like the pipe to be a little bit longer but when I rolled this up I must not have had one that was longer. There are a couple of ways to cover the pipe with fabric. One is to cut another strip from the sheet that's, I don't know, something like 12 inches by the length of the sheet you roll it around, overlap the raw ends, and then shove the uh, long ends of the fabric inside the tube to keep it in place. That works pretty well. Another thing you can do is take a length of fabric, fold it in half, sew one end and down the long side to make a sealed tube to slide the pipe down into, and then again, shove the ends down into the end of the pipe. Okay. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Lorna just texted me to say that maybe the link that the link for Facebook was not to this, but I swear to you, I did change it. I changed it. I promise I did. <laughs> so I hope you guys are with me. If not, the video will post to YouTube um, once we're done, once I'm done. Okay, so things I didn't say before I showed you that last video, I want to say now. Yes, I roll my quilts, and I roll my quilts because I have never lived in a house that was big enough for me to have an extra room with a king-size bed 
that I could just lay quilts on and let them be flat. I don't, I guess I know people who have that much space in their house. I have never been one of them. So yes, of course, laying your quilt super flat. Um, oh yeah, that's great. That's swell. <laughs> I live in the real world where I can't do that. The other thing is that all of the systems I use are very low tech. I'm not talking about super fancy equipment here. Now the tube, the pipe, the PVC pipe that I showed you there at the end, I didn't give you dimensions. I measured the pipe. Its interior diameter is two inches. The exterior diameter of the pipe I had was close to two and a half. I am pretty sure that PVC pipe comes in a variety of sturdinesses. <laughs> I know they come in a variety of, of thicknesses. So the um, there's one inch PVC pipe. That would be too small. There's three inch PVC pipe. Well, that would be nice. Uh, what would be nice about it is that it's a bigger pipe, so your, your quilt would not be rolled quite so tightly around it. You know, the it wouldn't be coiled as closely. The downside is that a PVC pipe that's three inches in diameter takes up more space in the closet because where do you store these rolled up tubes of quilt? Well, I'm going to show you that too. Let's see. I think that part showing you where it, where I put them, that's like in a little bit. But while I had the quilt on the bed, I wanted to also show you the rolling up. So you've seen how you roll it out. I want to show you how to roll it up. I also want to show you how to get this back on the roll. And to do that, I would flip the quilt around because you noticed I unrolled it and the top was on the other side of the bed. So this is the part with the sleeve. Always begin the roll at the top of the quilt because when you take it off the roll and hang it on the wall, the weight of the quilt will help to flatten the quilt out. And if this is where the tighter coil is, the weight helps smooth that out better. I'm going to get down here where you can see me. I have been told a number of times to roll the quilts with the right side out. And it's never really been explained to me why, but my suspicion is that when you unroll the quilt, it's going to retain some sort of curl from the pipe. By rolling my quilts right side in, when you unroll them, they would curl away from the wall just a little bit at the bottom. I have never had a problem with that, but some quilts that might be true. I can imagine that if you rolled it the other way, when you hang the quilt, it would curl back toward the wall, which might be better. The reason I roll them right side in is because if anything bad were to happen, like the cat got on the roll and did something like scratch it, I would rather have the right side protected to the inside of the roll. That's probably crazy, but it's the way I think. I just can't get past it. So I roll mine right side in to protect the right side. I'm taking my PVC pipe that is covered with fabric and begin to roll. Now I just took this off the roll, so it's going to conform to the roll pretty quickly. What you have to do is watch both ends as you roll the quilt because they will, one end or the other, will want to pull in or walk out. And every now and then, I pull the quilt toward me as much to smooth it out as to make it easier to um, roll. 
And I can see here I'm getting a little bit off. So I want to get back on. And during this, I'm also paying attention to is the roll staying straight with the quilt. This quilt fits the top of the bed with the pillows still on really well. When I have much bigger quilts, I take the pillows off the bed and then sometimes they're still even longer than the bed, in which case I, I try to get someone to help me support the end of the quilt that's hanging off the bed. Once you get it to there, then you take your strip of fabric. Can I just say this was a really nice sheet? It's used up, but it's kind of a nice thick cotton sheet. I'm going to place that there and begin to roll and then fold this end in to protect that end of the quilt. And then I would roll it up and use my ties to tie it. You could have more ties or fewer ties, and mine stay pretty well tied because they're cotton. Okay, so I just found out my sister-in-law Jane is watching. Hi, Jane. <laughs> it's nice to know you're there. Um, let me think what else. Okay, so you saw how the tying works and the, the rolling. I have been rolling my quilts for a very, very long time. And it's a system that works really well. And now I'm going to show you one reason why it works so well. And it's because I've got a good place to put them in the closet. And it's the same, you have the same space. I swear to you, you do. Okay, here we go. When I have unrolled a quilt, I like to keep the pipe, the cover, and the ties together for when I'm ready to roll it back up. So I fold the outer cover, place it with the pipe. I take however many ties there are. I tie them together. And I put them in the closet, usually standing up in the far corner. This is not ideal, but I don't live in a giant house. So I took this top part of the closet and Steve put in an additional shelf up high. And I have hooks in the ceiling and on the bottom of the shelf to keep everything from rolling out. And I store my quilts here. The PVC is heavy enough to keep the quilts from collapsing into each other. The quilts are protected, each one individually, with the fabric outer covers. I did cover the wooden shelves with shelf paper. The bottom one is painted. And you can see over here, I have a few quilts that do not have the outer fabric on them and it's because I get them in and out of the closet pretty often and because I need to um, get another sheet or a bunch of muslin. So I have short quilts and long quilts and every now and then I'll have quilts standing up at the far end of the closet but I try not to. The reason you want the tags on the quilts is because when they are here, it's really hard to figure out which one each one is without the tag. And when I put the quilts up on the shelves, I am very careful to put the tags at the near end so that I can find them. Okay, another part to that is that if you've got as many quilts as I do in the closet, it is a good idea to keep a spreadsheet or a Word doc or something that has the list of where each one of those quilts are on which shelf. And I was doing that really well right up until last December when I started the timeouts. And 
they've gotten jumbled since then because it, you know this one has been in the closet a long time <laughs> and i just recently pulled it out and and sometimes i don't put them back on the same shelf because i've shot anyway you get the idea and can i just say about empress feathers this quilt hung in my dining room for oh i bet five or six years i love this quilt I finally took it down because we got uh, something else that had to go up on the wall. But this is a really fun quilt. I had forgotten how much I like it. Okay, so that's th that part of the quilt storage. The next thing I need to show you, I know I did it. I think the next thing, oh, I've got to find it. I know I have a folding video. The next thing is um, hanging. I'm going to show you that while I find my folding video and put it in. Here we go. Oh, no, not that. There. This is Kauai Road. It hangs in my dining room. And I'm here because I will zoom in in a minute and show you how I hang my quilts. It is ridiculously easy. I get flat expansion rods, drill a hole at each end of the expansion rod. I take a straight nail, kind of a long straight nail, hammer it into the wall where I want one end of the quilt to be. I use a level, hammer the nail in at the other end where I want the quilt to be. And the end of the, the hole at the end of the expansion rod goes over the end of the nail. And they're finished nails so that they don't have much of a head. I drilled my holes from this side. And you can see that it's not completely centered. The hole at the other end is more centered. And that's one reason why you definitely need to use a level when you hang your quilt. I drilled, I smoothed off the ragged edges from the hole, and now I'm going to hang it on the wall. This is the finished nail from the wall. The head of the nail is a tight fit, but if I flip it around and put the nail in from the back side, it goes through just fine. So I do have that as an option. I can take the nail out, feed it through, and then put it back through the hole on the wall. Or I could drill a bigger hole. Either, either would work. One other option is this is an expansion rod that has a channel on the back. You can, with the nail sticking out of the wall, fit it into the channel and let it hang from there. What happens when you do that, though, is that the, the expansion rod may curl forward a little bit, but it won't be very much. There it is. The nail is through the hole at both ends. The front of the quilt covers the rod. Perfect. The reason I like this kind of a rod as opposed to a round rod is because it's rectangular and it's not going to bend in the middle the way a round rod would. On the rare occasions where one of these rods might sag in the middle, I will sometimes go in and put another small finish nail in the wall in the center so that it doesn't pierce the sleeve, but that it can kind of reach in and support the bottom of the rod to keep it from bowing. Okay, that's really easy, isn't it? Um, I have in the past used fancy schmancy quilt hanging systems. And if you have one and you like it, go to town. But an expansion rod and finish nails that leave little tiny holes in the wall, um, <laughs> they work for me. Now, I did go online and look yesterday at expansion rods because my favorite rods used to come from Ikea and they were um, 
like chrome finish and they were rectangular. They were really sturdy and I can't find them there anymore. Now all the expansion rods at Ikea appear to be round and round rods, you know, they're round. When you get a heavy quilt, they will sag in the center. So I went to the Target website and um, if you Google expansion rod at Target, you'll find exactly that rod that I had in the video. And I could take off the little rubber stoppers at the end. You could, you don't need them, um, but I didn't. I left them there. Now, I want to show you one other thing, and then I think I can add the folding video. You'll get to see kind of like the inner workings of my software. Okay, I want to show you this other quilt hanging. I made this quilt that was taken from a photograph that I took in a museum in Australia. I made the quilt many years ago in a Ruth McDowell workshop. And I wanted for this, for this timeout session to double check and see how this is hung and it cracks me up. I used a piece of flat wood, same idea, drilled at the end with a a uh, very small nail holding up each end. Works like a charm. Doesn't sag in the middle. Now the unfinished wood, well that's probably not such a great choice which is why I actually prefer metal rods at this point. Am I going to take that down and redo it? No. <laughs> no I'm not. Okay, so you guys are getting to know the real me. The real me is, um, you know, about some things I am not lazy and about other things, yeah, if it's working, I'm not going to touch it. Plus, that sleeve is double fabric, so if the wood is going to do anything bad to the sleeve, it's not likely to mess up the actual working part of the quilt. Could you use, like, um really thin wood strips for a larger quilt, you sure could. And you could finish them with like polyurethane or paint. You could put paint on them to keep the oils from the wood from getting onto your quilt. That would work. Don't know why it wouldn't. Okay, now, oh, one other thing before I forget, because I made a note, and that is if you've got a quilt, you've got it hung, and the bottom is like lifting away from the wall or it's just kind of wonky you know command strips command hanging things that have the adhesive that you pull the tab and it releases from the wall without damage I have been known to use one of the peel and stick things on the back of the quilt to make it stick to the wall is that archivally a good idea? I'm sure it is not. Um, has it made me not do it? Not so much. But mostly, I don't have to stick my quilts to the wall at the bottom. Mostly they hang just fine. So now we are going to see if it is possible for me. Yes, yes, look at that. Okay, now let me, let me do this. Let me add the video, choose file. I don't know if you guys can see that part, but here we go. This is the folding. Sometimes okay. I fold my quilts minute. on the straight. Stop that right there for a second. Grain, but not when I plan to keep them folded for a long time. And you can see here, there's already a little bit of an inset fold in the middle. I don't want, I don't want to keep that up. If I wasn't going to roll this quilt, and if I knew I was going to leave it folded for very long, I would fold it on the diagonal. And folding on the diagonal is a conscious choice because it's as problematic as folding on the straight of grain. To fold on the diagonal, I do not always fold at the same place and at the same angle. So it could be at a 45 degree angle or more likely I'll fold a little bit off either way. And to fit my space, I fold about like that and about like that. 
So if I was folding this for the closet, I would fold it like this, and then I would bring in an end. When I folded for travel, which is really more where I um, folded quilts, I folded to fit my suitcase. So to fit my suitcase, this one might come up to here, and to here, and to here, and I would do it just like that. If I'm folding for my closet, there is a small shelf that I've got where sometimes I put folded, folded quilts that aren't too big. I would fold about like this. Could I, should I, put uh, archival tissue paper inside those creases? Sure, yeah. Except do I? No, I don't have archival tissue paper. I, I just know I'm not going to do that. But it is definitely an option. One of the things about having your quilts folded is if nothing is sitting on top of this, that's better than if you then have about 10 quilts stacked on top of it. That's going to compress the creases. Best argument I've heard against folding on the diagonal came from Bonnie Browning at AQS, and she was talking specifically about show quilts. When you have a quilt folded on the diagonal that is then unfolded and hung in a show, the weight of the quilt is not helping the creases to pull out. It's better in that case if the quilt has horizontal folds that uh, can be pulled out. And I definitely understand what Bonnie is saying. And it makes a great deal of sense for quilts that are heavily quilted on the machine. I don't think you'd want to fold that kind of quilt straight or diagonal unless you absolutely had to you would want to roll it. And you would have to decide for yourself whether you wanted to roll it right side in or right side out. I believe for show quilts, they encourage you to roll it right side out. What I noticed with my own quilts when I traveled was that they were in and out of the suitcase so much. And I folded them and refolded them and folded them again and refolded in a variety of different ways that the quilt as a whole limbered up and the diagonal creases limbered up better than the ones that were on the straight of grain. And even this quilt that has hardly been folded and is not heavily quilted, I, I really do need to stay away from folding this so that it gets that crease in the dead center horizontally and vertically because I don't like it. So before I put this back where I had it, folded the other way, I am going to fold it this way to protect the center. And you may be able to tell it's folded a little bit differently this time than it was before. And that's good. If I was folding a big quilt on the diagonal, it would look just the same. So you can see here I'm not doing a true 45 degree angle. I'm going to fold and fold. Now, if I had folded this this way, and left it in the closet with quilts stacked on top of it for three or four years, those diagonal creases would be there. And I honestly can't tell you if they would shake out better or worse than straight creases would. What you have to decide for yourself is what kind of fold line is going to bother you the most. Speaking for myself, those centered Horizontal and vertical lines, they bother me a lot.
See, that was a late ad. Normally I have it go smoothly from the video to me. Okay, I'm glad I remembered to put that video in and I apologize for the little glitch getting it loaded, but the folding, there's not a universal truth, right? It really is true. You have to decide what you're comfortable with. I can tell you that I folded that quilt Monday morning on the diagonal and I only hung it this behind me this morning and I don't see any diagonal creases at all, but it, you know, it didn't stay folded very long. Would you be able to find other people who think different things about all of this? Yes. But my job is to tell you what I do and what has worked for me, and I hope you found this helpful. Now, one other thing before I go, I want to tell you guys, because signups are coming up soon. I'm going to be teaching in March of 2022 at the Empty Spools Seminars. There's my quilt on the cover. What I teach there, this is in Mon it's in Pacific Grove, California, outside of Monterey. Five-day seminar. You pick one teacher, and I'm one of many, and I'm in session two, March four to nine. Um, I teach an independent study, and you can do things that, uh, you can do piece of cake stuff, or you can do anything you want. I have a varied enough background that I, I've had people do all kinds of stuff in my class and it's great fun, it really is. So I have, I have really all kinds. Um, but the reason I wanted to tell you this is coming up is because registration starts Monday, April 26th and five days of instruction on the Monterey Peninsula it is reasonably priced with that in mind, but it does it does take a commitment. So um, you want to uh, Google or Lorna will Lorna I think is going to post the link. But if you Google empty spool seminars, you'll get a link to the upcoming classes, and it gives you time to think about if you would like to join me or us, any of us. Um, so there you go. And I'm two minutes over. So thank you guys for taking a time out with me this week. And I hope you have a lovely spring week. And I look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday at two o'clock central time to take a time out. Bye-bye.